in the ring today, I have a really exciting guest, Nigel Levine, who is six times indoor champion and double Olympian and a mentor. Um, so thank you for joining me today. <laughs> thank you for having me here, Roxana. <laughs> <laughs> so I really find your story fascinating and you've accomplished so much in your career and you know, you're a role model, you're a mentor, you're a high achiever. I just want to know, what got you started? Tell me about your backstory. So it all started mm -hmm. um, school days, about year eight. Mm -hmm. So I do used to get into a lot of trouble at school, like just misbehaving, um, getting suspended just for doing silly stuff, like playing football, where I shouldn't be playing football. Um, <sighs> I had a mentor that came in and saw me one day and he was asking me what I'd like to do with my future. Mm. And I was like, mm, I'd like to be famous. Really? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, as a kid, everyone would like to be famous sure. at the time. Mm. Um, I was just throwing it out there in the wind. Mm. And then she was like, okay, what's the, give me a list of things you'd like to achieve. And I was like, oh, I'd like to join the RAF or I'd like to do some boxing because I still like having little fights in school, we used to do boxing and stuff mm. at school. Um, so those are my little options and be a mechanic. So when I gave that to my mentor, they got mm. me um, all the information that I needed to get into those um, stuff when I was like, yeah, still year eight, but the following week. So we had all mm. the documents laid out there and she was there to help me to but actually help me focus, sure. so it stopped me misbehaving in school. Yeah, so you was a bit of a troublemaker in school and they thought, yeah. well, let's put a guidance counsellor to kind of give you a little bit more direction and focus yeah. in your life. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't that kind of naughty, <laughs> but it's just like doing little stuff like, <laughs> like, like I said, play football in, in mm. an area that I should be doing, like <laughs> just mm. little stuff really. So it's just to help me, <laughs> yeah control my energy because I had loads of energy when I, I was see. younger. I see. Okay, growing up, yeah. so you're not actually from London. No. Tell me where you grew up, what your, what your childhood was like. Uh, so, came into England in 2000, grew up in Northamptonshire, but well, I've got family living in Bedfordshire, so I'm always like crossing over. Mm. Um, and then went to college in Bedfordshire as well. So, ma mainly, Love grew up in Bedford, but then yet again, I moved to London to mm. pursue my career. Were you born in the UK? No, or I was you... born in Trinidad. Trinidad, okay. okay. 2000. Yeah. And how was that like? Because that must quite, have been a big transition. It was quite exciting. Being that young, it's yeah. a new scenery. Mm. Yeah, everything was quite exciting, quite new. Very, um, just opportunities. And I'm like, just trying to make the most of it, really. Like, that's how I saw it. Yeah. Back then, just want to have fun. Have was, a good time. It was an adventure, just yeah. coming into a different setting, a different arena. Tell me about how you got into track and field because your main sport is 400 metres. Yeah. But you, of course, do 200 and 100 metres as well, but that is your main domain. So yeah. tell me how track and field came about, how you excelled at it. <laughs> Well, I'm quite focused when I really want to be. Sure. Um, during school, I was the fastest boy in my year. Mm. Um, so <laughs> I wanted to keep that status. <laughs> Naturally, that would be your, yeah. you know, strength. And I'm quite competitive, yeah. Mm. So we start competing against other schools. Sure. Um, I did beat them. And then, <laughs> and then we went to another county, like little county champs with people mm. within the same age group. And then there was a guy called... Sean Taylor was my rifle back in, back in my school days, yeah. And we was competing in Corby. Um, he was training for, well, a while. He was actually training, whereas I used to just run for fun, mm. basically. And he had all the nice gear. He looked professional. He was moving. I was like, wow, who's this guy? And mm. then, yeah, he beat me. <laughs> Did you want yeah. to emulate him or you were just there in the, you know, doing your thing and just thought... Do you know what? It would be great to beat him. Was he your benchmark? Yeah, well, when he beat me, then he was the benchmark to beat. Okay. Because, like, I want to maintain that status of being... The best. Being, yeah, yeah. being the best, and I'm mm. quite competitive. Um, and it was his reaction 
Mm. <laughs> when he won that race, that really got to me. Do you feel like that was a sense of belonging? You belong to the athletics club and you you had, you know, um, a tribe that you belong to. Was that what gave you that comfort and security? Um, no, being quite competitive and <laughs> laser focused. So when I started it, I remember when I started, I remember saying this to one of my friends, one of my best friends back then, Stephen Parker. I was like, I just want to run for the country. Like, that was just my aim. Mm. That was literally the aim. Run for the country, that's it. It was just pure luck, not just being um, laser focused at that age, because mm. during that age, there was a lot of distraction. Like, we were mm. young, there's always a lot of random stuff to do after school, yeah. football, going to the parks, hang out. Mm. So, yeah, we used to race I each other. Each other. Do you think yeah. it was the people in your life, like your coach? What I find, yeah. especially in a sport that is an individual sport, even though you have a team around you, on the day you're responsible and you have to hold yourself accountable yeah. and you can't blame anyone else. You have to take responsibility. Um, and it can be a lonely sport at the end of the day because what I find is when I'm in the ring, it's one of the loneliest places um, and you just have yourself and your self-belief to rely on yeah. has that been the case for you um yes and no the yes part is when you really are in the zone mm. and you really sense of where you at mm. whether you're in shape or you're not in shape and you gotta perform mm. and the only time i really felt lonely when i def i knew i wasn't in shape and i was on the start line potentially knowing the outcome, mm. then there's no one to turn and look to really, you just yeah. stand there. Um, but other than that, I always had great support from my team, physios, yeah. doctors, coach, friends, family, always mm. had a great support network. And I think that's really helped me got through. A lot of sports people, you know, they want to change their lives for the better. They want to, you know, they see their strengths, they see, they want their families to have better lives. They come from humble beginnings. What is the motivation that drives you? What drive my motivation? It was um, 2006 when it really hit me. Was so, that your turning point as well? Yeah, it was a career? big, big turning point. So previously when I said my aim was to run for the country, like you would when you see TV, when you turn on TV you watch the athletics, I'm like, yeah, I would like, I'd like to do that. Mm. But why? Why? Because back then, I want to mm. be famous, like, as any that other kid. I would like to be... You didn't want to be a rapper? No. <laughs> I've, I've got no lyrics, I'm afraid. So. <laughs> um, those kind of stuff... Do they interest don't, you? Those lifestyles don't really interest me, really. Being a rapper, no, no. Not that kind of famous. I just mm. wanted to be just famous, doing something I love and something okay. I'm good at. Mm -hmm. which was being quick and being quite physically fit and <laughs> but um after setting that goal mm. i hit that target two years later so the age of 16 i've been yeah got a letter to represent the country and i was like hang on wow like wow. that was it tick box and I was like, compete for the country, came back, do my GCSEs. Wow. <laughs> I was like, As a 16-year-old, <laughs> that must have been an incredible feeling. Um, yeah, it was. Um, it was the European Youth Olympics, and mm. I think that was my taste of being a professional athlete. Like, the scenery, being in a, a, a village and different wow. sport. Like, it was all new to me, and I was like... I like this. <laughs> I was going to say, did your life just transform where you've got, you know, um, physiotherapy now and you've got massage and you've got a nutritionist behind you. Yeah. Like the whole team comes together. And did that play a big part in reaching the next level in your career? Yes. I was like, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed that time over there and just yeah. having that structure mm. and support network. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? This is wicked. So after that competition, um, I finished, I think I finished like 8th or 7th in the final for 100 metres. And I was like, yeah, this is alright. So yeah. at the end of the day, for me, 
I competed for the country, box ticked. Exactly. Following year, had chicken pox. How do you pick yourself up from those moments? It's that positive affirmation. I try and focus on all the achievements, whether they're small or big. I reassure myself. Yeah. Wait a minute, I've had bigger battles than this. I've dealt with this. I've had emotional struggles and I've overcome them each and every time. So I take that as affirmation mm. in order to build my self-esteem, my confidence. And then when you go in with that attitude, I feel as though I perform differently. Um, and the moments I have doubted myself, those were the moments where I didn't perform as well as I could have. I let myself down, but it was a learning curve. And like you said, because you started quite young, you were able to test your mental strength, your endurance, and figure out, okay, this works for me, and I'm gonna give myself that positive yeah. feedback, that inner dialogue to grow from each experience. Um, but were you disheartened by any uh, setbacks? No, wow. unfortunately, no. No, it's not noticed, unfortunate, um, it's great. It's, this is that actually It's thing. temporary, like, mm. it was a season that had a really bad season. Um, that had me really thinking. I was like, hang on, like, I understand I've done what I needed to do, mm. but I'd like to experience that feeling again, which is amazing. Fix up, train hard, and get back, get back on the track. And I did. I moved to. I had a conversation with the family, and they recommend that I should look around and look for faster people to train with. Mm. And I'm like, okay, so excellent. So yeah, I used to have little, um, what's it called, I think meetings used to go around with, around the country with little mm. groups of coaches where they go and they're sharing their knowledge. And I was there chatting to other athletes who used to kick my ass all the time. <laughs> and I was like, I'd like to train with you because obviously faster than me. <laughs> you trained with Linford Christie as well, didn't you? Yeah, that was later down the line, but yeah. beforehand I trained with like faster people. Atta Bolden is, um, yeah, Atta Bolden used to run for Trinidad. Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, he was um, he used to, he used to compete against Liv Christie as well really? during yeah okay. during the eighties and the nineties. And so. what was it about him that inspired you? Um, he was from the same country, and he was fast as hell. <laughs> 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 so, as a kid, you don't really need much to be inspired, and uh, by seeing that image, I was like, yeah, I'd like to be, like to do that. Mm. And <laughs> so that's how it kind of mm. went on, and I've been inspired by that. But usually, I would like to have my own style as well. I just don't want to just mimic that person. I also, want my little touch to. So you live that, quite fearlessly. That's how, that's the impression I'm getting. That yeah. whenever people are holding you back, you are your best mentor. Yeah. You are driving every conversation, everything that you're achieving is actually you are the driving force because yeah. you're dictating to everyone else, no, I can do this and I'm going to go for it. But do you not sometimes feel overtraining is what's leading you to these setbacks? Yes. So also with that mentality as well, mm. it's also quite dangerous. Yeah. The only reason back then, I ain't no doctor. <laughs> I didn't study the human body, the anatomy of the sure. human body and the muscles. I'm just... The conversation to say for say eight weeks in my head I'm like yep yeah, four yep yeah, you're and young by rushing mm. yeah by rushing those steps in the process it took me a few times to learn like just just kick back and hang on this person's done this a, a long time so yeah. just listen yeah. to them you have to take the good and the bad mm. and I think it's the same with me where when I walked into that world title I thought you know what I'm the underdog I remember competing for Great Britain and I'd go to Russia and, um, you know, Turkey and, you know, Thailand to compete. And I didn't have a coach with me. I had no one really believe, believing in me. Um, I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to go get, gain some experience, uh, dust off the cobwebs and just, just give it. But I had nothing to lose. And when you lift that pressure, there's a different kind of energy that you have that you can apply yourself because again being nervous drains your energy it all saps your energy and being able to control that emotion is a different skill in its in yeah. itself 
being in that situation whereas I'm like I'm just there to have fun mm. it's like yep yeah, cool whatever happens happens I'm just gonna go and if I die I die yeah um I won that race <laughs> I literally just won that race as well mm. and what and, year was this ah uh, damn I actually can't remember maybe 2000 and 13, 14, probably. Okay. Or before 2011. 2011, I because then so. the Olympics came, because we want to talk about that. Well, 2008 Beijing Olympics, I remember for that one, mm. 2008, I was good enough to make that team. Amazing. And there was a decision mm. above me that said no. Really? Yeah. Obviously, I was quite young as well. Did you ask why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, it was to do with my age, and they okay. they believed at the World Juniors, which was the same year, they wasn't unhappy with my phone bill. Oh, so, really? So it was. So yeah. your personal life came it, into question. A little bit. Do you think that they felt that you didn't have the maturity at that age? Because, like you said, you were quite young to compete in such a big arena as, you know, Beijing Olympics? Um, I don't know what the attentions were mm. um, and I still, up to this date, would not find the truth why that decision was made. And how did that make you feel moving um, forward? Quite angry, but at the end of the day, it gave me a lot of fuel for yes. the next four years, yes. knowing I was actually good enough to make the team because I... Mm was good enough to make that team, mm. to make the relay team. And so I, I set myself a target as in, I was like, well, next Olympics is 2012. That's my target. This build up of pure anger and turn it into something good. Mm. So those are my options and I'm like, okay, let's, let's see what I can do. Let's make home Olympics. And for the next four years, uh, I had to make a lot of changes, set a plan. Such as? And that's when I moved to Linford Christie because mm -hmm. his group, he had a really strong 400 meter group and all his um, athletes were beating me. Wow. Basically. So you <laughs> went from the top of the mountain, literally, you know what, I have to raise my game. Yeah, because it goes in age groups. So once you okay. leave another age group, you compete against older people. And mm. I was like, I need to get there. Okay. And Deep down, when you believe, like, hang on, if this person can do it, why, why can't I? Mm -hmm. like, I've beaten this person before. He's moved. He's improved. Now he's beating me. So okay. if I go there, do the same thing. <laughs> hopefully, I should be as good or even better. That was my belief system. And yeah, I went through everything added to make this Olympics. Literally everything I had. Wow. <laughs> everything. For the um, next four years. Two questions I've got for you. So you spoke about your mentor quite a lot. Do you think this is what every everyone that goes into sport needs? Because a lot of us don't have mentors, or you know, people starting out, they don't always have this person that gives them the right advice and the the right tactics. Do you think that's what helped you? And is this what you would advocate to anyone going into sport? Yes. I would advocate a mentor. The reason is they can help you channel your energy and plus they're looking at your circumstances from a different perspective. Mm. They're the one from the outside looking in and looking at all the different options. Whereas where you're in the bubble, you're quite limited in what you see and how you feel. You have to and make the goes, best of your situation. He goes, yeah, just understand the, the process. And if you put yourself in a situation where they cannot say no, then you're good to go. You can't just win. You have to absolutely demolish your opponent. You have to be 10 times better than anyone that you're competing against. And then that's a hard lesson that I had to learn yeah. over and over again. And then I come back to the same thing. And I'm like, why did I expect any different? The journey, that four year period of the training, traveling, meeting new people, going through the ups and downs, which make me a better character, mm -hmm. better person, that helped me got into 
that position, whereas they can't wow. say no, thinking about it, that time frame was is good. Even leading up to Rio Olympics, which was more come back from a more setback, I yeah had to pull out all the stops just to make that team. This is so interesting what you just said because these kind of adversities, it's not just the, the talent that you have, it's not just working on your physical ability, it's being able to build character mm. and enduring failures and building your personality to have a winner's mindset. Let's move on to 2012. What was that experience like? Because it's home, it's yeah. London. It was incredible. I remember being so excited. Um, it was it was definitely good to have your home Olympics because usually mm. when you do stuff like that you're always travelling abroad yeah. and you can't have the family your, come and watch you different and... culture and mm. experience in that whereas we didn't really stay here just to stay away from the media mm. all the emotions from the family, friends so we was out in a holding camp in, Por in Portugal I was a bit nervous I was like okay don't full start. You, you've done. You've done so much work. Just relax your skin, okay. Mm -hmm. Wait for the gun. Go. Okay. In terms of leading up to the Olympics, the further away you are, the workload is higher. Okay. And then coming into closer to the, the games, you do less, less hard work, more recovery, like you said. And it's more about sharpening up and getting closer towards the Olympics. Is more. It's fine tuning. Fine tuning. Yeah. Getting the rest make sure everything's good, the treatment, the physio, make sure you are at peak performance. Mm. So literally, day before, well, three days before you race, just do quick jog, stretch, relax, physio. Yeah. Don't direct my energy or my attention on the race. Just absorb the moment. Because mm. this opportunity right now, like the scenery you're in, it may not happen again. Mm. Just enjoy the food, the company, the experience. Yeah. And just absorb as much as you can. Mm. Being fearful is when you don't understand what is actually going on, I believe. Mm. Or you're worried too much yeah. of something that's not even happened yet. It's not as cheap as you people may think it is. Yeah. When you start yeah. going abroad for like two, three months. Mm. You still have to cover your bills, and you're not earning in your in home that country, time. and you're not potentially you're still not earning because you're mm. you're out there training. Yeah. So you have to have enough funds to cover those to make sure your mind is settled when you're abroad to actually yeah. do yeah. your job. We're all human. Everybody's got their own different yeah. story. Yeah. And I think I just like to like I said before, do me. Yeah. My achievements, as I see it, is my business in a way. Like I don't just go, hey guys, yeah, I'm an Olympian. Hey, hello, I'm Nigel, I'm an Olympian. Mm. Like, and sometimes, or most of the times, no one really cares. Everybody's got their individual battles going on, or different circumstances. Like, who knows what's going on within their life that I can actually help them with, instead of yeah. bragging about my own achievements. I just don't like to... You want to see things for what they are. You want that transparency. Yes. Um, and I think with that, you can see a lot clearer instead of, for example, having a group of fake people around you. Yeah. Because you wouldn't yeah. know when things get low, what's going to happen. What are your values? <laughs> uh, my values are freedom. Doing what you want to do. I have made mistakes in the past by mm. just being quite laid back, trusting the whole system. Yeah. And yeah, that bit me in the arse. It's so, a bad yeah. choice, isn't it? Because people, I'm just trying to understand from what you're saying is, a lot of the time people look at me and they see my success, but what they don't understand is 10 years in the making. You know, I've written my autobiography and he won sports autobiography of the year last, last year. And I took a lot of rejection mm -hmm. before I got to that place. In terms of having a mentor, a mentor doesn't have to be someone physically. It doesn't have to be that. It can also be a book. Absolutely. It can also be that. So it's just 
a mentor helps you change your mindset or and that's how I see it a mentor will just instead of you walking around pissed off oh this person did this this person did that a mentor will just help you no chill yeah look at it to make you look at it from a different perspective. perspective and books can also do that yeah and that's how I see it I think when you're in harmony and you um, have that marriage between your body your mind your spirit that's when you excel in whatever field you are trying to, um, you know, pursue. Yeah, they call that, the, I've read about this, it's called a flow. That's what they call it. And as I see it, it's like when you are enjoying yourself with your friends, family, you don't worry about time. Mm. Two, three hours can go by, it'll feel like two minutes. And they call that the state of flow. Even this interview, we were just sitting there having a conversation, state of flow. I don't even know how long we've been talking for. Mm, I'm not aware. But it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like a long time. Yeah. So it's having that and understanding that. And also with people, when you're getting rejected, I see rejection as a standard. What is the key to success in your opinion? I guess success is relative it's, it's to relative. everyone. It is. But it is. what qualities do you think leads to success? Um, firstly, the interpretation of success is different in everyone's mind. As when I speak to like my young boys that I work with, mm. their definition of success is for boys loads of money loads of women loads of clothes mm -hmm. that's literally it whereas my definition of success is are you doing what you want to do mm. it's like if i want to go to the shop and buy an ice cream right now i can go and do it to me that's successful that's success yeah. in my yeah. eyes i'm doing what i want and it's yeah. for you to figure out yeah how to get it and that's the bit that don't really show you in nowadays or circumstances just show you the end results yeah rap videos most of it some of it is the same all the cars money yell etc drinks they really show you what is the journey and like i was saying previously mm -hmm. when i made those teams thinking back it was the journey the people i was with yeah the, con the connections i've made Staying focused, going to bed on time, eating this food, eating that, saying no to this, saying no to that. Thinking about it now, so all the it choices was, it you was made wicked. leading up would, to this, I'll happily do it again because now understanding and having an experience of having a different lifestyle, I actually don't like it. Mm. I actually really don't like it, so I might have to slip back into to my old habits and just have my goals set up and just do what I need to do mm. and like I said absorb the environment the energy around you yeah which is the journey yeah yeah I remember seeing pictures of you like like this <laughs> literally yeah and then I remember speaking to you and you said my hips may not ever <laughs> yeah. you know go back to normal so yeah. I won't have the power the strength to be able to run like I used to. My career's over. Yeah. I can't imagine that something being taken away from you, especially when you value freedom the most. Yeah. Um, it was that day, I remember that day was, it was life changing. The thing is, I wasn't even sad about it. So you was in a motorbike, wasn't you? Yeah, we had a head on collision. Um, in Tenerife. Yeah. Um, it was it was pretty 2017, bad. right? Yeah, it was it was, oh, it was pretty God. bad, but it was just when I was absorbing the moment, it was like a movie scene. All the blue fashion lights, people running around in panic. I was like, yeah, this is literally like what you see in the movies. Like this is yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, and you this got is actually happening you got, to me. You got airlifted because you you were fortunate because you had your yeah. So at a I had um, surgery there. Well, I had one there. I had one major surgery there, trying to put me back together, <laughs> and I had to 
fly back to London, well, back to England, to have another surgery to to align my hips. I've broken my pelvis. Um, so it opened about three, three to four centimetres away and up. Oh, so it, it, was, it was quite bad. Couldn't walk. It was a lot of pain. Um, when they explained it to me, they was like, hey, you broke your pelvis. I was like, just put it back into place and uh, let's go train. <laughs> they was like, no, it's, it's not as simple as that. But with that happening, I saw it as stuff happens, things happen in life. It happened for a reason. I'm quite satisfied of what I've done in my past. And I was yeah. like, whether I can walk or not, I have accomplished a lot of things that I think I wouldn't have accomplished, well, mm. believe I could have done in my younger age. So I've done it. So I'm like, look, yeah. I'm quite happy. Like, whatever happens next, happens next. You took it in your stride. Through all the medication I was on and doing rehab. I remember I was at training and then I got a call saying, you failed the drug test. And I was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Which, is that something that casually happens? No, because I've been tested since I was 16. Mm -hmm. Like, being on a program, you get tested a lot. Yes. So I thought it was a prank. I just didn't really take it seriously. No, I was just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever, cool. And you, rang again. And, and, and you probably believed I did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I haven't cheated. Like, everything's there. Like, I've got nothing to hide. Mm. So they called me back again. They was like, oh, this is so and so from anti doping. I was like, is this you through? Was it like cameras? Like, obviously, I'm turning around now, looking. I was in Brunei at the time. I was like, so where are the cameras? He goes, nah, you fell for some fat burner and I was like I was like okay because you had those traces of it in your system and with the rules you are responsible for what's found in your system wow so me being me I'm quite a laid back person during mm -hmm. this whole accident stuff pills all the stuff I had I don't read the labels like doctors give me this give me that and you're I focusing don't... on just recovering at that point yeah I ain't got time Focusing on reading the labels and checking if this is approved or not, mm -hmm. didn't. And I think that was one of my biggest mistakes. Being educated on anti-doping, obviously mm -hmm. meant to read everything. And I'm like, I ain't got time to read everything. Even buying vitamins, I can't really just go to Tesco's and buy yeah. vitamins. Yeah. If I've got a yeah. headache, I can't really just go down the road and buy paracetamol. Like, there are, there's certain drugs that just has to be approved for us to take. My goal now is set up the next phase of my life get ready for longevity, not just try to make this team, make that team. I've, I've done those. I will most likely do athletics just to maintain the fun. I do enjoy mm -hmm. it. Um, help help people, help educate young kids. Like I said, I'm mentor. So they will make mistakes mm -hmm. that I've made. What advice would you give to them? Make sure you question yourself, is this what you really want to do? That is... I think is the biggest advice and if you're unsure find someone who's doing that same sport have a conversation with them so you would know what you can expect going locked down that road all the dramas and everything like nothing is smooth sailing so speak to someone in that field that you would like to go down and gain as much knowledge as you can and you can decide there and then if you would like to carry on that road or try something else so you don't waste your time. Thank you so much for no, coming thank you on. Very much. I really enjoy talking to you. I always learn so much from you yeah. and I love your attitude, you know, because you don't take failure as failure. No. You know, most people do. They're like, oh, that was an obstacle. And how do I? They actually label it as an obstacle and failure. You don't even acknowledge it. And I think that is one of the best things that I've learned from you is yeah. that my mind frame is on another level. I'm goal driven and I'm going to enjoy every step of the journey and I'm going to see it as what can I learn from this rather than why did this happen to me. Mm. Um, so your story is remarkable, your, your mindset, your enthusiasm and yeah. I'm sure the audience will absolutely love listening to you again and following your journey. So yeah. thank you so much. You've been an incredible guest. Thank you. And thank you for being on my show. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh <laughs>